In this video, we will explore how internally HTTP request and response objects looks like in case of node. So currently I am within this folder of 6 request and response. You will get this folder along with the code on the right from the exercise files of this course. The link is in the description. Now these code we already saw in the previous videos. So let's begin. So here within this request listener function, we have HTTP request and HTTP response object. Let us talk about them a bit more. How to use them? What information and capabilities do they provide? How to know what to do with them? The easiest way to explore them is to log them. For example, you can use console.log statement and print out HTTP request object. Save the file and run that file. Once you are done, hit this URL. Well, once you hit this URL, you will find the message being displayed here. But in the terminal, you will find we have something dumped in our terminal. And this looks pretty overwhelming. Well, it is basically the request object. It has a lot of properties and it has printed a lot of nested properties, including the main properties of the request object. Well, right now it is a bit harder to read as a beginner. To get the smaller output, all we have to do is Go to your program and try to use a different function such as dir. And then as a second parameter, let us define the depth as 0. Save the file and then shut down the server, control C and rerun the file. Once your server is again up and running, go to your browser and refresh the page. Once you refresh it, you will find a smaller output starting from here. And depth equal to 0 simply means we are going to print out only the first level of properties for this request object which you can find on the left. So here if you notice the very first class that you can see here is the incoming message class. Which means the HTTP request which we are sending from the client to the server is actually of the type of incoming message. You might ask how it is helpful for us. Well, if you want to know what are the operations or actions or properties which you can extract from this HTTP request, then you have to check the documentation of incoming message class in the official website. So for that, I will go to the new tab and look for Node.js API. Go to the first link that is Node.js org slash API slash index. If you go there and maximize it, then you will find the HTTP documentation here and then search for incoming message. Well, here we go. This is our class of HTTP incoming message. And within this class, we have all of these properties which you can make use of. Also make a note that sometimes developer get confused with the class of client request, which you will find here. Well, this client request is some other class and does not represent HTTP request object. It is something different. The main HTTP request object is actually this class of incoming message. Now the other thing that is worth to note is that in the terminal you will find the incoming message was printed twice. For example, here we have incoming message with all the properties and down below again we have another incoming message object again with some properties. Which means that this statement was actually executed twice. Which again means that for a single HTTP request coming from the client, the listener function that we have here is executed twice. So this means all of these code present here are executed twice whenever there is any HTTP request. Now the question arises, does this incoming message object and also this incoming message object are same? Well, the answer is no, they both are different. The most significant difference that you will find is in the URL object or the URL property. For the first incoming message, the URL represent the endpoint URL as just slash, which we will talk about it later. And in the second incoming object, you will find the URL object has a value of fav icon. Well, you can even print those properties. For example, console.log and just type request.url and also for the sake of more clarity let us print one more log statement this time print out test message 
just a dummy string value. Save it, shut down the server, clear the console and then rerun the script. And as a next step, go to your browser, localhost and just refresh the page. Once you refresh it, come back to your terminal. So here we go, if you notice, for the first time we are getting the URL as just the endpoint URL of the home page, along with the test message. And the second time this function was executed, we are getting five icon along with the test message. Now the first URL actually represent this base URL with a slash in the end, like this. Fine. Now the second URL, the five icon, simply look for the five icon present in the server. Now if you don't know what is a five icon, well this icon is actually the five icon. For the Node.js website, this icon is actually again the five icon. Now proceeding, let us explore this response object. Now this response object is actually the HTTP response object that we are sending back to the client from the server. Let us use the same approach to log that out by using console.dir response object with the depth of 0 and remove this test message. Save the file, shut down the server and restart it. And then refresh your page. So once you do it, you will find all the details of our response object. So the response object is of the type of server response class. So in the documentation, you will find what data you can send back to the client. For example, if you go to the documentation, then using that response object, you can actually get the header or set the header. Even set the timeout, set the status code or write data to the response body of the object. How cool is that? You can control anything and everything, whatever you want to. And in the terminal in our console, you will find that many of these properties has some default value. For example, write table as true, has body as true and many other things. So that was all about request and response object. We just explored them in detail. Now another thing to note here is that these request and response objects are actually the streams. The request object is a readable stream. That is using this request object you can actually read the content of the request object. But you cannot write something to it. But this response object is both readable and writable. You can read it and even modify it like we are doing it here. We are writing some data to the body of this response object. Now since these two objects are streams, so they are also the event emitters. Now what are streams and what are event emitters? We will check them in our upcoming videos of this series. So please don't worry about them. In the next video, let us summarize what we have covered so far in our initial journey to learn Node.